Hi everyone. Um, so I am Pierre, uh, CEO and co-founder of Strapi, and I am very, very happy to be with you today at the API Days. So it is my first talk here, and today we are going to talk about delivering faster with GraphQL and Strapi. So when you think about delivery, you will probably think about um, your pizza delivery that you have been waiting for many minutes. So it takes time, and it's very boring. And actually, uh, the definition of deliver is to send, provide, or make, make accessible to someone or something. And when it comes to web, the delivery looks sometimes like this. A loader which is uh, taking time because you are the user who is waiting for the web page. So everything about web is about delivery to the user. And it is very important, because one second page load yields to 11% fewer page views, 7% loss in conversions, and 16% decrease in customer satisfaction. So you have to take care about your users and deliver to them faster. And this is the topic of this talk, so we are going to understand how it works behind the hood. So when a user is waiting for a web page, um, most of the time, the mobile device, device or the laptop is actually getting some assets. So it can be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. And then um, the phone is getting these assets. But it's not the end, because the phone has to get some data from a data or content API. And then there is the response. And at the end, your user is happy because the page is displayed. So in this talk, we are going to focus on two parts. Uh, so the first one is the response, and the other one is the delivery of the data uh, content API. So let's start with the response. There are many ways to um, decrease um, the uh, response time. The first one is probably to have a better network, but you know, most of the time you don't have control on that. So one of the other ways to improve that is to actually reduce the data payload. And this is where, where GraphQL comes to the rescue. So let's take an example. If you are going on TechCrunch and you see the latest articles, you can see many um, articles. And if, you, if this page is, for example, requesting a REST API, this is what's happening. A huge response with many fields and one which is actually useless, which is content. And it is, in this case, the biggest one. So it's a huge problem, because in this page there are only five fields which are displayed. So the title, the publication date, the author, the description, and the cover image. So with GraphQL, what is really, really good is that you can pick only the fields you need. So you can hugely just decrease the response size. So that's it for um, GraphQL and the response uh, improvements. Uh, so we are going to start with the second part of this talk, which is the data content type, uh, content API delivery. So delivery uh, in a web application is not only about displaying the page quickly, but it, als it is also about delivering the features quickly to the users. So at Swapi, um, we really want to help developers uh, make this delivery faster. And, and this is the topic of this second part. So for your information, Strapi is an open source headless CMS. So it is uh, published on GitHub. Uh, we are about to reach uh, the 10,000 stars. So feel free to, to give some uh, uh, in the repository. And to explain you how we help developers uh, saving time, we are going to uh, show you um, with a quick demo. So Strapi um, is based on Node.js, so it's already installed on my com computer, but if you want to install it, uh, you just have to type this. Oh, yes, sorry. Is it better? Like this? Is it OK? OK. Um, so. It is already installed on my computer. So I'm going to create um, a new project uh, on my desktop. So if you are creating a blog, for example, um, I'm going to have some questions from Strapi. So it's compatible with MongoDB, Postgres, uh, MySQL. 
Um, so I'm going to do my project with the uh, Postgres. And it's going to generate um, some files and folders uh, on my computer. So I am relying on the internet connection, so I hope it will be fast. Okay, here we go. So the project is being generated. So as you can see, we have some directories here. It is the admin folders, uh, because uh, as you are going to see, there is a, an admin panel in Strapi to uh, build the API and to manage the content. There is also an API where the uh, files will be generated according to your API structure, some configs according to the environment, so development, staging, production, node modules, and the plugins folder. So a little bit like WordPress, uh, Strapi is based on a plugin system. Uh, so you can install some of them and remove them if you don't need them, so it's very flexible. Okay, so my project is generated. Um, so I'm gonna start the server. So Strapi is based on Node.js, so we actually start a Node.js server. And it's opening in my browser. So again, like in WordPress, I'm gonna create my first user with a password and an email address. And here is the, pan the admin panel of Strapi. Can you see it? Uh, yes? Okay. Um, so the first step um, is to create a new content type. Um, so if you are for example, building a blog, uh, you are going to create a new content type, um, which is post, and add some fields. So each post must have a title, which is a string, some content with a text type, and I want to display it as a WYSIWYG. I also want a cover image, and a relation with the um, user model because um, I want to have an author for each post. So I'm gonna create a relation uh, like this. So yeah, each user can have many posts, all right? So that's it, I save and I can already had some posts in my project. So this is my first post. Um, so we have a markdown editor here. Um, so this is a title. And uh, here we go. We can have a better view, you know, to edit the content. Uh, you can add a new file and add an auto. That's it. So I'm gonna create um, another one. Here we go. And that's it. So uh, basically, I've set up my project, inserted some content, and what I want now is to display this content in another project, um, so a front-end project. Uh, so because Strapi is a headless CMS, it doesn't uh, take care about the uh, front-end, front so there isn't any template engine, uh, but there is a very powerful API, uh, which you can request from any front-end. Um, so if you want to get the list of posts, uh, because the API um, is secured by default, um, you get a forbidden uh, error. But that's no more. So, we are going back in the admin panel and in words and permission. We can adjust each uh, security rules for each endpoint of your API. So for the public wall, which is actually the not authenticated wall, um, we are going to click on it and we get the entire list of actions of the API. So here is a section related to the post and we are going to uh, click on find so now, if I'm going again in the API, we get the list of posts. So 
that was, that was quite easy, but this talk is not about REST APIs. So um, what we want to do now is to add GraphQL. So it can be a lot of work to uh, develop a new GraphQL API, but not, not worry. We have a plugin for that uh, in Strapi, so you just have to click on download, and it is actually downloading a new module from NPM um, to add the GraphQL capabilities to your project. So it's going to take a few seconds. Here we go. So it's reloading, and now the GraphQL plugin is installed. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to GraphQL. And here we go. This is the GraphQL playground. So we are going to write uh, our first query uh, to get the list of posts, the ID, the title, the content. And here we go. So you have a very powerful API here. Uh, so we are going to get a little bit deeper. Uh, so for example, if you want to get the author um, or maybe the cover, uh, because you, you want the images, um, you can get everything from your API. But that's not all. You can also use filters, for example, if you want to limit uh, to one. Or uh, you can also sort according, for example, uh, to with the creation date. Uh, but you can also sort on the other side. And you can even uh, yep. You can even do some more powerful things, like uh, where, um, I don't know, title um, contains. Um, contains the uh, first. Okay, this is not very. I did a little mistake here. So yeah, let's take this one. So if you have, for example, um, this title contains first, so that's where you can easily filter your data. Um, but we also support mutations. Um, so for example, if you want to add a mutation uh, and create a new uh, post, um, so that should be a post. And here we go. There is a problem here. It is forbidden. And here again, uh, this is uh, predictable because the create action is um, not allowed by default. So we are going to allow this action here. Um, so in post, uh, create. Here we go. And now if we run it again, there is a new post. So if we are doing that again, we should get the entire list of posts. Here we go. So that was basically how to uh, use the API. I'm just going to show you quickly how the code looks like. So it's going to be probably a little bit small for you. OK. So in the API folder, there is um, a new directory, which is called post, uh, which is actually the name of the first content type. Um, so in the controllers, uh, you have the actions which are used uh, by default for the REST API, but also for the GraphQL API. So um, you can also add some uh, with resolvers if you want to. Uh, so by default, there is a generated schema based on your uh, content types. So it's a huge file, not that huge, uh, generated for you. So your uh, GraphQL schema is here, but you can also extend it. So if, for if you want, for example, to add a feed uh, query, in your project, you can replace this content uh, with a query, which is a feed, uh, and the feed is here. And as you can see, it only returns the, um, the post which are published, 
Uh, so let's try again here. And yeah, this is how we're restarting. And that should be, oh, I stopped the server. Sorry for that. Okay. So now, uh, if you want the, the feed, Okay, so it breaks because uh, the published colon is not existing at the moment. So we are going to add it here. So we go back in the content table there in post, and we add a new field, uh, which is a Boolean, and it's, which is called published. Save it. And now if we go to post, and if we, we try again. So the list is empty because all the posts are not <coughs> published. And now if we publish it, we can see it's working. So um, that's pretty much it for the uh, demo. Uh, just some advantages compared to some other uh, headless CMSs. So Strapi is completely open source. So what you have seen uh, today is available on GitHub. It's completely free. Uh, you can customize it uh, according to your needs. It is based on Node.js, so if you are a JavaScript developer, you can easily um, update uh, the project, uh, the code base. Uh, so it's quite easy to use um, and has some uh, good performances because it is built on, uh, on Node.js. Um, so that's it for delivering uh, GraphQL, uh, delivering faster uh, with uh, GraphQL and Strapi. So at the end, your user uh, is happy because you delivered faster. Um, so that's it for my part, and I really would like uh, you to welcome warmly Derek Meafi, who is uh, one of our most active users. Uh, he's coming straight from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and he answered more, to more than 600 issues and pull requests on GitHub and is going to explain you how he's delivering faster with the GraphQL and Stripe. Thank you, Derek, for being here. Testing, testing, okay. So, yep, I'm here from the United States uh, as a day job. I'm just a regular data center technician, mainly specializing in hardware security. Um, but as a hobbyist, uh, I'm head of a development group for a player faction in a video game. How many here are... Uh, uh, gamers. PC gamers? Mm, maybe not so much? Okay. Uh, how many of you guys have heard of a video game called Elite Dangerous? Space sim, shooter? Okay, a couple of you. All right. Um, so what, what we're using um, Strappy for is uh, for, for our player group. So Elite Dangerous has a player journal. Uh, it's just basically dumping data from the video game into a text file, and we're parsing this uh, to build tools for users to help solve problems. So um, my player group is Canon Interstellar Research. Uh, we're actually the largest player group in the video game. Um, and we typically focus on scientific data. So similar to what you're gonna see in real life, um, we're tracking interstellar information, Etc. cetera, um, uh, cataloging, dealing with uh, coded mysteries, analyzing audio files, etc. So one of our tools deals with uh, some ancient ruins in the video game. Um, we actually custom build these SVG images um, and using GraphQL and Strapi, pulling information from that player journal and storing it. Um, we actually dynamically render um, different groups of what we call obelisks. Uh, each obelisk has some combination of items that provide data to the user, help them solve the puzzles. Um, in this case, uh, the, there could be hundreds of thousands of different possible combinations, but we're not the only ones that want to use this data. We want to be able to offer this data to other third-party developers uh, in uh, dealing with other information. They may need more information, some may need less. Um, and we actually have a lot of console-based users, people who are using mobile phones or their laptops, where they may not have the best connection. 
and we want to be able to render this data dynamically and quickly to the end users. And using something like REST, um, it can be challenging with mobile devices and load times, et cetera. So we, we prefer uh, using GraphQL and only using the data that we need to help speed up the response time and decreasing data payloads. So um, obviously, being open source, um, and I'm not, I'm not in this for the profit, um, but we still want to get these tools out. Um, we may not have the same kind of advertising revenue and things to get our tools known and helping users. So um, we need to be able to decrease bounce rates, keep users on the page using our tools, and obviously we need to start ranking ourselves in search engines. So how do we do that? In the past 28 days, um, we actually were moving from a legacy C-sharp-based Angular front-end uh, REST API to using Strapi and GraphQL, and we're seeing huge benefits in all kinds of areas. So with search engines, we're seeing a good 20% increase in our rankings and Google, et cetera. We're getting more and more users, getting them more active, keeping them on the page longer, using our tools, spreading the word uh, mouth to mouth and decreasing bounce rates. We, we, we like them continuously looking through the data and helping us find mysteries that maybe we hadn't seen before. So in this example, um, these are directly taken from our old REST-based API and our Strapi GraphQL-based API. Huge benefits here, uh, somewhere in the range of 30 to 40%. Um, the data payload in this case being one of our main benefits. We're still working on building some mobile applications as unfortunately Sony and Microsoft are not as open to uh, deploying plugins and mods for consoles versus on PC. Um, here's another brief example. Obviously we have a lot of room for improvement. Uh, 10 second page load times is a little much, but um, just, just using GraphQL and decreasing the payload size by only pulling the data that we need, uh, easily over a 50, 50 to 60 percent increase in uh, page load times. And that's about all for me. Um, uh, so, oh, sorry. Uh, so for Strapi, um, for us, uh, I only have a group of about 10 coders. Um, so. Getting the back end up quickly and fast and not having to worry about build all this stuff from scratch, um, huge time saver for us. Um, and just being able to host it open source and on a minimum budget. Um, being just a hobbyist coder, I, I, don't have, I don't have the spare funds to s roll into something like AWS or Google Cloud. Um, and scaling this stuff out because, uh, I mean, Elite Dangerous, there's hundreds of thousands of users and I, I don't really have a way to monetize this. So being able to run this stuff on my own equipment, on my own servers, or if I wanted to use it in the cloud, I, the option is up to me. Um, like I said, getting it started for the backend developers, um, there are way more front-end developers than backend and most, most front-end developers, they're not interested in working with backend stuff. Uh, unfortunately, as hardware guys are few and far between. Um, and obviously, the faster we set up the backend, the quicker my front end guys can get new tools and stuff out. Um, the games change on a daily basis, so it's important that when some new data comes in, we're able to quickly roll out new endpoints, or in the case where I have third party developers that want to use my data, I don't have to custom build REST, end, REST endpoints for every individual use case. I offer my GraphQL schema. They can pull all the data that they want quickly and easily without me intervening in between it. So, and that's it. Um, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, David, for this case today.